Hello friends, myself Dr. Amit Ahuja, Assistant Professor, University School of Education, Girgobin Singh Indra Prasa University, Delhi. Today we are going to discuss EVS as an area of study with a reference to National Curriculum Framework NCF 2005. It's a matter of observation that young children have a natural desire to learn because ultimately they are humans and humans are a social animal and they have a natural desire to make sense of the surrounding world. Definitely they interact with their surroundings, act with their surroundings, assert with respect to their surroundings also. As such efforts that is learning and make, making sense and ultimately lead to meaning making and hence make their worthiness as a living organism that is a human. So that's why a young children is a kind of a personality who is curious enough to interact with the environment, learn from the environment. Then after that NCF proposes some aspects with respect to learning of early years in the life of a child. That is, learning must be based on child's interest and priorities. That is, child interest and priorities must be incorporated into the curriculum so that boredom, deviance, dropouts, etc. don't take place or at least are minimized. Children's interest must be cultivated, incorporated in the learning situation and they must be given due priorities. That is, doesn't mean that if it's an idea by a child, it should be excluded. No, it should be given due acknowledgement. Then the curriculum should be contextualized by child's experiences. Child experiences must be used to develop or provide context to the process of learning. Then the curriculum must have formal as well as informal structures. The formal structure may come from the regular content, course content of some discipline, but the informal structure may come from the experiences, needs, desires, wills on the part of the children and they must be given due importance and they must be incorporated into the learning curriculum. Learning should be based on environment that gives them warmth, security and trust to the child. Yes. Learning should not be in isolation to an environment. It should be within that environment, meant for that environment and it should stand for that environment so that a cohesiveness between the children and the environment develops and in turn the child gets warm security trust that they are part of that environment. Then what kind of environment must be there to get these objectives? environment must be rich in stimulation that is it should not be dull at least it should be interesting then after that it should be challenging if it's interesting to the child then it caters to the needs of an average or below average child with respect to intelligence but if it is challenging then it is for a child who is above average intelligent so environment must cater to the needs of all it should not be skewed in nature that it caters to particular one kind of only because if it caters to one kind then other uh, category may feel uh, bored with respect to that environment. Environment must be full of experiences. Yes, it should have objects to work upon, to be worked upon so that a child derives experiences over a period of time. Besides this, environment must allow the child to explore, explore, experiment, assert. That is, environment should be dynamic enough and it should permit the acts, deeds on the part of the child to explore itself. That is, environment must be explorable. It should not be locked. That is, nobody can unlock this. Nobody can explore this. Anybody can do so. But first thing is that the person must have a will. That will we as a teacher 
may develop among the children by motivating them to explore. That is, allow the child to experiment also, yes. Can the objects in that environment be manipulated? The child should touch them, sense them, manipulate them, change them. That is, must experiment with them and then arrive at a conclusion. But that must be done under a powerful supervision because it may lead to uh, negative as, uh, effects on the child also. Then environment must embed social relationships. Yes, man is a social animal by nature, others survive with us also in, it, in that environment. So our deeds should not be there in such a manner that it disturbs others, harms others. So feeling must be developed among the children that environment has social relationship. So uh, for teaching of such kind of environment, we should incorporate all these, all these aspects that there must be simulation, there must be stimulation, environment must have experiences and allow the children to explore, experiment, assert and it must have social relationships. Then learning of early years as proposed by NCF 2005 refers to the foundations of academic learning. Yes, it is a phase of learning where academic learning is also being emphasized in its full swing. But do remember, learning for life is also in practice. That is, academic learning has a definite end at some point, but life, lifelong learning or learning for life are continued. EVS should be taught as an integrated course for the entire primary stage. Another important aspect that was postulated by the NCF 2005 that it should be taught in an integrated manner. However, it should be a way of learning. The curriculum at primary level must support the child to find his or voice. That is, by doing so, he or she realizes that he or she is a part, member, component of that environment. Positive things can be come from a little mouth or an innocent child. We should maintain the dignity of that child if some innocent child speaks something to conserve an environment, to protect an environment. So due regard must be given to her, his or personality. Second, curriculum must nurture the curiosity to do things. Yes, of course. It should not be in a prescribed manner, examination oriented. It should must have a provision to do the things so that curiosity of the child is maintained and ultimately it leads to some definite output. The curriculum must ask questions and pursue investigations. Yes, it should be challenging, problem oriented, issue based so that children doubt, question, probe pursue investigation. The curriculum must focus upon sharing and integrating the experiences with school knowledge rather than ability to reproduce textual knowledge. The children must be promoted to share, assert, negotiate, oppose each other with respect to their own developed views about an environment. And after a deliberation, they must integrate the experiences at their own end with conceptual knowledge so that the content knowledge becomes a lively one. Otherwise, merely producing in the examination will lead to score or achievement, but it will not lead to learning. Learning of earlier years also focus upon knowledge construction by children. That is, constructivist approach must be there. Knowledge should not be taught. Knowledge should not be perceived as given. Knowledge is constructed. Friends, information means bits of messages. And these information or the bits of messages, when they are processed, they lead to construction of knowledge. But one step is still left there. That knowledge must be practiced and then it leads to development of a wisdom. So, information is processed, knowledge is constructed and knowledge after construction is practiced and leads to wisdom. So, NCF 2005 focuses upon knowledge construction 
on the part of the children rather than passing off information. Then knowledge being passed on must be differentiated through any kind of rote learning on the part of child because rote learning leads to nothing but knowledge construction ultimately leads to a way a moment when that knowledge may be practiced that is knowledge is workable knowledge becomes workable it does not confined up to bits of messages like in case of information so knowledge being passed on through any kind of rote learning should be differentiated with this knowledge construction role of schools as far as in this domain is to help children in constructing knowledge by drawing upon their diverse experiences yes even their experiences should be given due regard due acknowledgement while framing the syllabus or the uh, course content of evs for example in a class some children may belong to rural domain some may to urban etc so their experiences observations may be used to develop that otherwise it's not possible for a child to survive in this area then after that in another area then in third, third area and so on but when we have a blend of diverse kind of experiences then at least the child may be motivated to think about another kind of an environment that hitherto has not been experienced by him or her another thing is that learning experiences must be planned to provide enormous scope for child's knowledge construction yes knowledge construction doesn't come in seconds or in hours or in days it comes over a period of time so learning experience must be planned that should involve at least questioning thinking discussing arriving at a conclusion so that a common structure with respect to some content or aspect is developed as knowledge that is knowledge construction then children should be motivated or help to make connections between their observation and experiences in their environment and hence derive meaning or connect with their previous knowledge the last aspect that is derive meaning or connect with their previous knowledge refers to the constructivist approach that is whatever is learned new must be linked with their previous aspect now we focus upon children need to be help to make connections yes they should be motivated to find any clue cue in the form of connection that whatever has been observed experience does it stand significant for you do you have something in your past with respect to that if they don't then a proper knowledge base may be provided so that at least that absolutely newly learned concept may lay a foundation for future learning or if otherwise there is some previous knowledge previous domain then simply it should be added or the student should be motivated to add to that structure then learning of early years as proposed by 2000 nsc of 2005 states that teachers need to develop a deeper understanding and insight into the ways how children learn and assimilate knowledge from their daily experiences yes teacher themselves as a student might have undergone rote learning retrieval in the examination and scoring good marks etc but now they have to become a constructivist teacher or at least a teacher who promotes constructivism in his or class then it requires a deeper understanding and insight into the psychology of learning how humans thinks how humans work how does our brain mind work etc and ultimately how children learn so that they may provide an environment within the classroom that motivates the children to think learn and all these practices over the period of time facilitate the children in assimilating knowledge from their daily experiences environment and child's learning a child is naturally motivated to learn yes it's a natural desire on the part of the child to learn and every child is capable of learning that is we should not regard a child who is absolutely capable of learning 
or disregard a child who is not capable of learning we should maintain the dignity of the personality of the child a child learns through experiences in making and doing the things experiments read discusses asks questions listens thinks reflects and expresses all these are the things that facilitate facilitate a child to experience then how does this kind of learning take place on the part of the child that takes place individually as well as socially socially means in association with others that is his friends peers neighborhood family etc individually means what individual are exercised by him or her with respect to some learning domain so that is many things come at individual level but many things come also at social levels as society is a source of learning also learning takes place through interaction with the environment that is whatever is available to his or immediate nature the things around him or her and the people around him or her all these lead to interaction facilitate interaction and hence learning on his or part learning on the part of child also takes place through actions and languages when language is a tool actions and deeds also lead to some learning on the part of the child also now evs as an area of study with respect to ncf is a domain or a way of learning that supports the children to explore their surroundings that is children are dynamic by nature they are not static they are not, not just like robots who are waiting for command etc they are humans they are ready to learn they are capable to explore their surroundings then children use their environment as a learning resource yes by evs or as a way of learning or exploring the environment children are capable of using their immediate environment for their learning as a learning resource they can learn from their immediate environment that is life doesn't exist in case of humans but for microorganisms also for animals also what whatever they are going to today may affect the lives of others tomorrow also so such feeling may be inculcated in teaching also so that a sense with respect to environment conservation is developed among them then children are supported to link their daily life experiences and existing knowledge to develop new learning yes even a single moment doesn't go in vain if humans learn life is meaningful so whatever they derive on day to day basis then it becomes a coherent whole after a period of time over a period of time then existing knowledge is linked with that then as a period of time a whole structure that may lead to wisdom on the part of child also develops evs as a way of learning supports the children to construct meaning meanings of the world around them for example i remember the case of jagdish chandra dr jagdish chandra basu scientist who was playing with a ball and the ball touched the plants and he rushed to pick up the balls and someone said oh don't go there plants are sleeping and he doubted plants are sleeping only humans sleep why plants and so on then the person just satisfied the child but that motivated the child jagdish chandra basu to pursue the field and ultimately he led to this discovery so this was a very small incident in his life that led to an important discovery so that is for that child dr jagdish chandra basu he attempted to construct meaning of the world that is are plants sleeping so such kind of things may sometime lead to discovery also we should derive meaning of the things around us with some sense that the things are not meaningless they are happen for something for some meaning then evs supports the children to observe the links between their experiences and textual knowledge that whatever is taught in the school is useful for the society school stand for the society society in turn affects the school also 
So, there must be a linkage between the classroom learning and outside knowledge, outside experiences. EVS as an area support the children to sharp the, sharpen the skills of observation, exploration, recording and reporting. That is process of approach of science is being emphasized. EVS is a multidisciplinary area that comprises the domains of life sciences, physical sciences, social sciences. So, in case of sciences, the aspects like observation, exploration, recording and reporting comprise the process nature of the sciences. So, ultimately EVS also focuses upon this process approach and hence in ultimate time with such practice, it can lead to product aspect of the science. EVS as an area of study supports the children to develop a range of life skills like teamwork, communication, negotiation, critical reflection, decision making and problem solving. Yes, they have to live in a world, they have to survive for a world. That is, they must be social enough to work with others. So, by developing the skills like teamwork, communication, etc., they may survive and contribute much better with others. Then, EVS supports the children to appreciate diversity and celebrate differences across region, cultures and socio-economic environments. That is, if they appreciate the diversity properly, there is no need to say that a tolerance is required on the part of an individual for others. No, an acceptance is required on the part of individual for others. Because if we appreciate diversity, we will accept others. We will not tolerate them. Every person has equal right to survive on this earth. So, why that person should be tolerated? He or she should be accepted by being an respons a responsible member of the society. And by, by appreciation of this diversity, the children may celebrate differences across region, cultures and socio-economic environments. That is, the person of other diversity is not an alien. He or she is also a member of this society. Then EVS as an area of study supports the children to change from being passive recipient of information to active participant in the learning process. Yes. If we focus upon the harmonious development of the personality of the child, that means we want to focus upon the child-centered education. But that child-centered education also requires that a child must be active participant in the learning process because ultimately learning is for him or her. It is not the subject that is at the center, it is not the teacher that is at the center, but it is the child that is at the center. So, the child should not be perceived as a passive recipient who is waiting for the information to dump the bond, but is an active participant who is ready for knowledge construction that is ready for processing the, of the information. Then, the role of teacher while teaching EVS changes from being a supplier of knowledge to an active facilitator. That is, it does not focus upon dumping of information, knowledge, information transmission from one generation to another, but a process in which information is worked upon to construct knowledge. So, teacher is an active facilitator. Teacher besides this is a co-learner also in the process of knowledge construction in which children are engaged. Definitely, the teacher also learns. For example, a subject that is being taught by a teacher to students over a period of time. The subject remains as such, but if the teacher practices this with respect to constructivism, then he or she can develop a skill or a perception how that subject is to be taught a below average child with respect to intelligence, an above average child with respect to intelligence or an average child with respect to intelligence. So, such participation develop a resourcefulness on the part of teacher also. So, friends, let us sum up now. EVS as an area of study or as a domain of practice of knowledge for learning with respect to NCF 2005 states that environment must be dynamic enough and it should facilitate the children to explore because the children are curious by nature, they are ready to learn, they are capable of learning. Classroom experiences should be linked with outside world also. Children's experiences should be incorporated into the curriculum also and their voice should be duly acknowledged. Teacher should act as a facilitator and 
he should also practice the constructivist approach so that he becomes a co-learner and develops a resourcefulness on his or her part also. Thank you very much.